Welcome to worship this Ash Wednesday. I'm Pastor Steve, and on behalf of our whole congregation here at Grace Lutheran Church in Boone, North Carolina, we want to welcome as we gather on this holy day. Ash Wednesday is a special day as it begins our Lenten observance. It's a time for us to consider deeply how our lives might be reshaped so that we in our lives today might show forth more fully the life and intention that God has for us and for all creation. Thank you for gathering to worship with us this night. As a note, later on in the worship service, we will invite you to make the sign of the cross on your own forehead. Uh, we'll ask you to use oil, uh, olive oil or another kind of oil you have in your home. Please do not try to mix any of your own ashes, uh, but just use oil and you can use your thumb and I'll provide more instructions at that time. So if you'd like to find uh, a little bit of oil in a small dish, uh, we'll use that a little later on in our worship service.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven 
where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the last couple of years, I began participating uh, in a workout group of other guys from the community, and it's, it's kind of fun. So uh, we take turns leading and organizing the workouts, which were all done outside. And uh, so a couple of weeks ago, I was charged with leading one of our Saturday workouts, and I got this question in my head. It was the old Aesop's fable, right? The tortoise and the hare. You may be familiar. The story goes that the, the tortoise and the hare are entering into a race, uh, and the, the rabbit runs way out ahead while the tortoise sort of plods along. And of course, the rabbit gets distracted, and eventually it's the case that the, that the turtle wins the race. And it got me thinking, if I did this with a workout, if I were to divide our group in half and send some ahead and have others do exercises and pace, I wonder who would win. So what do you think? Who won? We sent the rabbits out ahead. They, they ran up a hill, and they had a whole list of workouts to do at the top. The tortoises had the same list of workouts, but they sort of would go a little way and do a workout, and then a little ways and do another workout. Well, who do you think won? What do you think? Well, it turns out the tortoises won every single time. Uh, and that includes all the array of different health positions we're all in, too. It was amazing, and uh, as we were reflecting on this afterwards, uh, after the workout was over, we got to wondering, why was it that the tortoises kept winning? And we, it occurred to us that when you were the tortoise, you would use uh, your, your breaks your, would happen, you would work out, and, and while you were catching your breath, you would sort of move to the next station and move to the next station. And when you were the rabbit, you went out ahead, and in between sets, you had to take your breaks up top. It took significantly longer, in fact, for the hare uh, to catch up. Uh, but this is sort of true in a variety of other ways, too. You think about this. Uh, they talk to people like me about saving for retirement more like a tortoise than a hare. You do these small increments over and over and over again, small steps each and every day now, so that in the future it adds up to something big. So it got me thinking about this season we begin today, uh, Lent. I think it's kind of a tortoise season, meaning that it's a time when we focus on some small changes we can make in our lives, which over time, when put into practice, have the potential to make a big impact. In fact, they have the potential to open us and to, and to form us into the, the people that, that God has really and truly created us to be. Our text for tonight is Matthew 6, as it always is on Ash Wednesday. You may be familiar, this is uh, part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Uh, back in Matthew 5, we get the Beatitudes, which are really uh, are pretty memorable to most of us. And Jesus goes on to teach about a few other topics. And then our lesson begins right at the beginning. We get actually most of that sixth chapter, and the sermon continues on into the seventh. But what's interesting is just before our reading today, we get this line. This is the last verse of the fifth chapter of Matthew. Be perfect, Jesus says, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, perfection feels like a really high and very likely unattainable goal for us. What is Jesus talking about? Is he, maybe he's asking too much of us or expects too much of us. Uh, but I do think that perfect is a bit of a misleading explanation or translation of that word. The Greek word there is uh, uh, teleo or telos is the root word. Uh, that same word is actually used in John's gospel when Jesus is hanging on the cross. He'll say, it is finished. That word finished is the same word as perfect here. It's telos or teleo. So teleo means completed, finished, perfected, maybe. Interestingly, most scholars seem to believe that the word teleos is the Greek way of summarizing the word shalom in Hebrew. The word shalom uh, often is translated peace, but it always has that connotation of wholeness, right? Or oneness, 
and so completion and perfection sort of fit within the same definition. It seems then that the, the whole point of this Sermon on the Mount is to provide instruction to these crowds of people that have come out to hear from Jesus. And he gives all of these instructions, some sweeping ways of being and seeing the world, and in the case of our text today, some specifics of things that might be done. But the whole point hinges on that last verse from the fifth chapter. The whole point is that one would be made complete one would be made whole, one would be at peace within oneself. Because in living out what Jesus teaches, we discover our true identity. The invitation of our text tonight is to imagine what type of small steps, tortoise-like steps might be taken today that would move us in the direction of wholeness, completion, maybe perfection, and to recognize that this life of faith looks more like small and steady steps as opposed to big and sweeping movements. And so we get the threefold call in our text today, our threefold call of Lent in, in its entirety. There's three things that we are to focus on this season. Prayer, fasting, and giving of alms. We're invited to be ones who spend time in prayer. Not uh, in fancy prayers that we speak aloud, but in silent prayer or in the Lord's Prayer. And become the type of people who in our time of prayer can both speak to but also listen to God speaking to us. And the only way that we do this well is through practice. We have to just practice praying, practice some silence, practice listening, tuning in to what God is doing. Sometimes prayer does involve other people, meaning that in our silence we might hear God speaking and then bring in a, a someone else, another Christian, and say, hey, here's what I believe God's moving or speaking or doing in my life, what do you think? What do you hear? But this time of Lent is an invitation to consider more deeply time of prayer. So that's our invitation. How do we make prayer a more intentional part of our everyday life? Two is fasting. We don't do a lot of fasting in the Lutheran tradition, uh, but I think this is also where we get that idea of giving something up for Lent. Uh, fasting for a season from a particular thing. A lot of times Christians will give up things like chocolate or other decadent type items so they can have them again at Easter. And this is a, actually a pretty ancient practice. But I guess the point is a fasting is to let go of the part of us that gets so focused on the temporal, gets so focused on what's in front of us, and to step away from it for a moment either by letting go of it or uh, the practice of fasting, maybe for a period of time, has the practice of taking us away from how we're going to fill our bellies next and instead looking out to the horizon to see God coming near, to see the world more authentically. Fasting is never about what we give up. It's always about what we gain. And the third is the giving of alms, the giving away of money. This one is, in the Christian tradition, especially these days, more of an act of defiance than anything else. Our world would tell us that there is not enough to go around and we've got to, to fight and claw in order to have our fair share. But people of faith instead are invited to just freely give away what we have to the ministry of the church, to local nonprofits, to people in need in our sphere. It's an act of defiance to say to the world, there's always enough because God provides enough. It comes from God and it goes to others. And so when we give away a portion of what we have, we say to the world, this stuff, this money, is not what life is all about. And we give the world a different narrative one of abundance, one of receiving from God's abundance. 
And so these are three small practices, daily prayer, finding something to either give up for Lent or, or try a practice of fasting for a period of hours, and giving away intentionally some money of ours or some stuff of ours for the sake of those in need. These three small practices can make our Lenten observance complete, perfect, finished, whole. But they also have the potential to have impact far beyond just the next 40 days. When we begin to incorporate these small tortoise-like practices into our everyday life, we discover that we are changed in the process. And what's interesting is we're not changed into somebody who's different than we've always been. But instead, we shed all those things about us that are not from within. These three practices tune us in more deeply to ourselves, shedding all that's on the outside to discover more deeply the one that God has always created us to be. And in these small practices, we get to practice who we really are and what a life of wholeness, completeness, fullness, in the image of God really looks like. And so at the end of the day, these teachings from the Beatitudes and into our text today are not necessarily something that are opposed from the outside, but instead are an invitation, an invitation to learn more deeply who we really are. So might this next 40 days provide that opportunity? This isn't a matter of receiving God's grace. If you, if you don't pray every day, it doesn't mean you're, you're cast off to hell or anything like that. This isn't an issue of, of salvation. This is an issue, as I sometimes like to call it, of grace upon grace. As those who have been washed in the waters of baptism, we know we are already claimed as beloved children of God. We heard it several times in, in the season after Epiphany. But now in the season of Lent, it's an invitation to receive that grace anew, in a way that it reshapes our lives so that we no longer are the people apart from who we are, but instead grow more deeply into who we've always been created to be. Join me in these Lenten observances of prayer, fasting, and giving of alms, so that together we might discover the abundant and gracious nature of our God as we grow in fullness in tortoise-type steps to the people we've always been created to be. Amen. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. 
but our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists and resist whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love. Strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgment, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. At this time, I invite you to find uh, your oil in, in just the little dish. If you need to pause our worship video and come back, that's okay. I'll invite you now to dip your thumb in the oil and make the sign of the cross on your forehead as we receive these words. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen.
We continue with the prayers of the church. This night we will use a bidding prayer format that will introduce a theme for prayer, followed by a time of silence. God of grace, we lift up these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your holy church, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For world leaders and all those given authority to lead others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and hurting, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all your saints who have gone before and those of us who grieve, but not without hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear these and all the prayers we uplift to you this night. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our worship continues now with the offering. If you'd like to, you can pause our worship video and using the QR code on the screen, go over to our donate page where you can support our mission here at Grace to share God's love so that all are served and supported. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness Feed us not only with this holy food, but with the hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share your bread. Thanks be to God.